Uh, with that, uh, just know that you are being recorded. Uh, this is part of uh, the, the the training. People that will come later will not be able to. Uh, they will be able to see this. So that's the reason we're recording. So um, we're, we're going to be recording. I just want to welcome everybody. Um, this is our first training. Um, last year, COVID caught us flat-footed in many ways, all of us. And some of us adjusted better than others. Um, some of us had some better plans than others. But this year, we decided to give it a try and try to help everybody as we plan together. Um, we are welcoming you to this training that has been put by the PBE team, uh, led by Jean and uh, Marilyn and Sherilyn and oh, P and um, many others who have. I don't know what the mic is. This. So, um, just wanted to just wanted to remind you of the settings over here. When uh, when you have a question, uh, just please try to raise your hand as best as possible or put it in the chat. Um, you know, this is a, a big meeting we're going to have right now. We have 62. We will not be able to take every single question and we will have designed a breakout room at the end so that if you need to ask some questions, we'll t you can join a group uh, here if you want to stay in. Um, so even if you may have questions, just put them in the chat. Some of the co-hosts over here will be able to answer them as they go along. And if they can't, they will answer them in the breakout rooms. Just to kind of FYI everybody, uh, so that you can understand that we will not be able to take every single question or, or answer every single question that comes. But if you write it down, uh, the group of leaders over here will be able to respond as best as possible and also stay at the end for Q&A. Uh, with that in mind, you know, we, we're going to start and, and uh, just also thinking about the challenges that you will face. Uh, this training is for you to get used to um, how PBE is being planned at the division and union level. Uh, and if you want to take that and do it in your local level, if you can do it, great. Uh, this is not meant to force you to do anything you don't want to or you can't. If your conference, if your area cannot do this, you adjust and you do what you need to do for your conference. This is just something that you might want to get your conferences ready so that you can understand the usage of Nearpod and Zoom and the platforms that we're going to be using. And, um, you know, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. We're creating a website and, and have that ready. And that's the reason we're putting this training because some of you conference leaders are still kind of thinking, how can I do this at my local level? And we're trying to give you some ideas. Once again, this is this is for union and division level training, but you can glean some ideas of how to do it. And if you cannot do it this way, then you do what you can do. Um, and you can see on the on the instructions that we have sent, um, there are many uh, suggestions as to how to do that. If not, once again, we have a Q&A at the end that we will be able to help you with. And we are trying to make this easy, as easy as possible for people to understand. And I know that the document looked big and had a lot of stuff. And that's the reason we're doing trainings. This is the first of four. We will do another one in December and two in January to make sure that all of you understand and your people uh, can understand. And so the instructions, the conference leaders uh, should have it. And if not, we will post them over here on, on the chat. So in a, in a minute, um, if, if any of the co-hosts has that, they will post it, and if not, I will post it after we start the prayer. So at this time, I think, uh, Jean, are you the one with the prayer? No, that's you. Uh, that's me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's start. I was like, ah, oh, the agenda. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> let's start with a prayer at this time. <clears throat> thank you, Heavenly Father. We want to thank you so much. Um, Lord, this, this is a challenging moment in ministry, uh, but... As good Pathfinder leaders, we are trying to tackle it the best way possible so that we can be of help to our leaders and that our Pathfinders can be um, you know, thriving even in, this, in the midst of this situation. Help us to understand. And if we don't understand, help us to find someone who does and help us to find a way to make sure that we are helpful to others. Thank you for bringing us together. All these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Before we go to Gene, just a reminder once again, if you uh, can remember to be muted, um, we will mute you if, <laughs> if we hear some noise, but if you have a question, just raise your hand, post it on the chat, uh, and we'll try to reach out to you. But we have a full agenda. So Gene, please take it over. We are glad that uh, there's a group that has uh, has a lot of technical experience and technical understanding. And I'm going to ask, uh, uh, as you guys, uh, I call your names, if you just kind of raise your hand, uh, uh, Marilyn uh, Boismer from here in the Texas Conference, uh, Sherilyn O'Phils from the Potomac Conference, and uh, Ki Song uh, here in the, uh, the Texas Conference, and Jeff Cooley. I'm, I'm not, I haven't seen Jeff, but I, I think he's on here today. Uh, Jeff is working with us, and also uh, my son, uh, Chris Clapp uh, from the uh, Texaco Conference. But they have uh, been working on this, and this is not just a new program. This is something that has been tried and true. So it's, uh, it has been through its paces. Uh, it was tried last year. It worked very well. There have been some tweaks. And uh, with that, uh, we are very happy for that. Now, we are looking at this and uh, are planning to do this for not only the union, but also for the division testing. So uh, it, it is a very good program, uh, but you'll be using Nearpod, you'll be using uh, Zoom, and on occasion you'll be using Google Meets. And uh, we're starting to get way out of my uh, bailiwick here. So I'm gonna turn it over to, uh, to the the operational team, uh, Marilyn, Sherilyn, and uh, uh, all you guys take it away. Welcome everybody. I know the document we sent as uh, Armando said was very long and somewhat confusing. We tried our very best to make it simple, but it's just not possible. Uh, there's a lot of balls in the air. As Jean said, this has been tried in the Potomac Conference and in the Texas conference last year. Uh, we've tweaked it a little bit to take out some of the bumps that we ran into to make it a little better. Um, so we hope that uh, all of you can glean something from this training. We are here to be helpful. Um, every conference is gonna have to decide what's best for them and how to do it along with the unions. Um, you may take this and just tweak it to your, how your conference needs to run uh, their events. First off, I wanted to talk about registration. This is critical. The way everyone's gonna enter to get access to any of the activities is through a, a website that we are creating. What login you register with is the login that will let you in. So this is parents, pathfinders, uh, monitors, your conference personnel, any staff, if they want to come in and view the proceedings, they will need to register and they need to register with the website with the, I'm sorry, with the email that they intend to use to get in. So it's very, very important that they do that. Additionally, for those of you at the union level, we are going to count on you to vet those people. You need to know who your team members are, who your monitors are, who your staff members are, so you can approve those names to go in because not just anybody who logs, who registers gets to come in. We need to know who they are and why they're there so that we can put them in the right rooms with the right security, with the right protocols. So we need to set up a process with each union who's your, our contact so we can work directly with them. We wanna make this as secure as we can. Um, so we're gonna need your help on that. Let me explain a little bit, just very quick on that, everybody. I know that everybody's like, what, how do we do that? Um, if you attended Playbook, we have a system uh, that you registered and the people who attended had a, a login and the webmaster was able to match the login to the email and they can use it only once, one login. That means that if you log in and somebody else tries to log in with your same email, they cannot. It's only one login. That's the reason we need to know all the information specifically for who is your team's 
like Marilyn said, everything that you would do uh, in, 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 a, in a setup and in, in you know, in a presence meeting, but this is going to be like that. So I just wanted a, a little more clarification. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's going to be, we're going to need a process to do it. Normally, when we have registration, I help put that together and I have envelopes and it has names of people and who's allowed in and so on and so forth. You get wristbands. Well, we need an electronic method of doing the same thing. So the registration is going to help us with that. Uh, we will need monitors, which would be like your scorekeepers. They aren't keeping score, they're doing something else, but every team needs to have a monitor. So it's important that every union know who their team members are and who their monitor is so we can identify them separately, and make sure we know who they are. Um, the registration will help us do that. It'll have places for people to click who they are. We're gonna need judges and Jean's gonna put the judges together for the NAD level. But if you're gonna use this process for union, you will need to put up your own judges and we will help you get, make sure they get the questions and answers and the, you know, and Miguel's gonna go through how that process works, but you're gonna to need to put that together. Um, so that's kind of like an overview of general kind of things that registration encompasses. We, uh, I wrote down, and I might include more, but right now, the person's name who's registering their affiliation, um, whether they're a club member, a staff member, a parent, a relative, that we need to know. It can be a relative who comes in to see the proceedings, but I need to know they're a relative, not a team member. Um, email address, club name, church name, conference name, all the normal things that you would do for a regular registration, we're going to need. Um, there are some operational rules, depending on the type of team setup. And it's pretty, I think it's pretty clear in the document. If you have any questions about how monitors function, uh, we will gladly answer those questions. We will probably have training for monitors, just like we do in a normal PBE. We have all the scorekeepers come in and we talk to them. We'll have to have a training for the monitors. So, but that'll come you know, later once uh, we know what teams we have and so on. Uh, so basically everything that you saw at a regular PBE we're doing, we're just doing it electronically. So if you have a question on how it's gonna be done, we're gonna be glad to answer it. And some things we don't have answers quite Yet. I have one question that I'm still working on that came through today from someone. I said, oh, that was a good question. I need to think about that. Um, so that kind of gives you a general overview of what operational rules are going to be. It's basically the same as always, just electronically. So any information we needed before, we're going to need now. And the past, Gene got the names from each union. He got their emails and so on. Same kind of process, but it's all going to be electronic. Now, as far as the website, the website itself, hopefully all of you attended Playbook because it's gonna be really, really similar to Playbook. Um, when you log in and you get admitted, you come to a front screen, which is the main proceedings. That's the main show. Everybody can see that, who gets let in, so the parents or relatives, they can see us welcome them, we can worship, we can have any activities we're gonna have will be on that main screen and everybody gets to see that there's going to be a Zoom link for the monitors. That's a technical link. That is, that's where they let us know their team is ready to go, that they're all connected and everybody, so that's where they check in. Um, they're gonna have, um, if they have an issue, let's say they're online, all of a sudden everything goes down, their server goes down, they need to get reconnected. That's where they report that issue so we can stop PBE, get them connected again so they can, we can proceed. Um, so the monitors each will have a connection with the, um, a Zoom connection just with the technical team. If we have many, many teams, we may have break them up into different areas um, just for ease of our technical team to monitor things. But in general, they'll have a Zoom session they go into. Um, I gotta look at my notes, make sure I don't miss anything. Um, when you enter the site, You'll be able to choose a language. For those of you who have um, people who speak Spanish or French, who want to, well, basically we're covering English, Spanish, and French, those three languages. You get to choose that language when you come in. There'll be simultaneous uh, translation for those viewing the main event. So the parents and so on will be able to have that translation. 
when we go to read the questions, it'll be done as normal, which is the French group go off to their own session. They get run separately and we will run English and Spanish together. Okay, so that again, is just like normal PBE, just electronically. Um, one of the questions I've had for people who receive the instructions is about how much technology each team needs. And it sort of depends on how the team is meeting. If the whole team can come together in one space, um, then they need less technology. If everybody's in their own home, we've been locked down quarantine in their state or their city, they're gonna need more technology because each child has to have technology versus just one for the two for the team, all right? So if they're in their own space, and I have a picture, I'm gonna change the slide. Sherilyn did a picture for me and I thought this was an excellent way of showing how you would do a team. As you see here, this is what we recommend. There is the main proceedings on this front screen. The scribe sits here, they're in Nearpod answering the questions. The monitor is here. He can get, communicate with anybody in the team. They're all six feet apart from each other. So you're gonna need a, uh, a room big enough to get them spaced out. So when you're picking your room, it not only has to have good connectivity, but it needs to have good spacing for the kids, okay? But they may have one member out. Uh, if one member is out, it gets a little more complicated and or more than one member is out. Let me see, where did my picture go? This is the same room, but viewing with one member out. This member is home, okay? So what has happened here is number three, he's not in his chair here. He had to be at home. That child is on a group meeting that they can that is being broadcast to the rest of the team. So you're gonna have to have another computer for the people who aren't meeting with him. And the monitor needs to be able to see them all the time to monitor, you know, to for help them be honest. And then the scribe shares their Nearpod screen with the child who's not there. So they can see what's being typed, okay? So if you had two kids, you'd have the same setup, except for having, you know, here we have, numerous kids this exactly this slide that has more than one child you can have all your team members in different locations but then they have to have a computer uh, let me say this a different way if you're home as a child you need to have a computer where you can see the shared screen and you can talk to your team members it can be on one laptop i would not recommend an ipad or an iphone it's going to be too small because you're gonna have so much that you need to see. So they're gonna to need to have some type of computer, I would think. It's not that the connectivity doesn't work, at least for my eyesight, it would be just way too hard to do that. So I hope that kind of helps you figure out how you wanna do it. I believe that we need to be prepared for both scenarios because we don't know what's gonna happen. You may have area level done one way, conference level, oh, now we're in lockdown, union level, we're not in lockdown. So your technology team's gonna be, have to be flexible to, to understand how this works so that you can help your kids. The tech team that's that here will be doing the NAD, but we do not have enough personnel to help each of your individual children stay connected, get the right devices, do the practice. You're gonna to need to do that in your own conference or in your own area or in your own union. So um, Key and Miguel are gonna walk through how this system works. So you can set up your own practice sessions with your kids, with your teams, make sure everybody understands connectivity. It's very important. When we did this in Texas last year, we had practice sessions with every single team so that they knew 
what was happening before the event. We had practice questions. We went through all the technology. You know, we had some kids who had 50 windows open on their, on their computer and it was too slow and it wasn't working. So we had to advise them how to run their computer. You know, all those glitches need to be worked out before we have the event. Because at the event, things move pretty fast. And if we have 100 teams or 200 teams participating, if we have 10 teams that are stopping everybody from proceeding, it's gonna be a problem. Instead of having a three hour event, we'll end up with a six hour event, okay? So it's very important that your kids practice and understand, all right? And it sounds really mean, but, <laughs> but it's very, very important that they understand how this works. So they're not surprised, they're nervous enough as it is. They've practiced, they've, they've learned their, their chapters, they're ready to go, but they're very nervous and they're 11 years old or 12. They're gonna need their hands held for practice so that they feel confident that they can do this. Um, Nearpod, Key's gonna show how that works and Sherilyn. Um, one thing is real important that the kids notice is the timing from the main screen and the timing on Nearpod isn't exactly the same because depending on their connection, it's gonna be a little different. The real timing is on Nearpod. That is the time they have to answer the question. The timer is there, that's what they pay attention. If the one on the screen for the person reading the questions is off a second or two, that's not important. What's important is the one in Nearpod. It confused the kids a little bit to see the difference and it just has to do with their connectivity and we, there's nothing we can do about that. But as long as they know that the real time that counts is Nearpod, I think they're gonna be okay. Marilyn, I think it's also important to point out that the time on Nearpod is actually going to be longer mm -hmm. than it is on the, uh, on the slide that you see on the screen. Yeah, we're giving them extra time because of technology and uh, we figured it was, because we're not here to disqualify kids. We want kids to be successful. So we're gonna give them a little extra time for each question, just so that they can, you know, if they have trouble communicating, especially if they're all in different locations and lockdown, they may have trouble all agreeing on the answer. And so we thought we'd give them a little more time to, to work that out. Um, but it's not drastically a lot more. No, we're talking, you know, 5, 10, 20, 15 seconds. I think the most we added was 15 seconds when we did the Texas one. I think Potomac did the same thing. They added, depending on the complexity of the question, we added some more. Um, one more thing about judges. The judges, the way we're going to handle it is a team of judges will get all of one question. So all, however many teams we have, their question one goes to one team and they all get reviewed by the judges. So there's no scorekeepers, no challenges needed for that because every question goes to the judging team. So, because normally in a thing, you know, the scorekeeper does the scoring and if the team can challenge the question and send it to the judges, well, we're sending everything to the judges, okay? So there's no need for that challenge. There is a need and this is what I don't know the answer to, and we will come back to you with the answer. And the question I received today was, what if they challenge the actual wording of the question? They think the question was confusing, not they're challenging the answer, but they, they wanna talk about the question itself. We're gonna come up with a method to do that type of challenge. I don't know what that is right now, and, but we will let you know how we do that. Um, Miguel's going to go over how the judges, how the questions come, how they get divvied up, how we get it in the spreadsheet so that the unions and conferences can do similarly if you so wish. He just kind of explained how the division's going to do it and you guys get to decide. You may have a method you really, really like and you can do that. But we thought for those of you who this is all brand new territory, uh, you might find it helpful. So that was really fast. I'm Cuban, so I talk really, really fast. <laughs> but hopefully that made some sense. If you have questions, put them on the, the chat. We are gonna have a breakout and hopefully we can get most of your answers, your questions answered. So next up is Keith. He's gonna demonstrate Nearpod for you. He kind of show you how it works for the different points of view. So here's Keith. All right, so 
what I'm going to show you here is if everybody can see my screen, I'm going to show you Nearpod from two different perspectives. One is the uh, perspective of the group that's going to be running the test. And then the other perspective is um, the perspective of the team, of a single team. Actually, I'm going to show initially two teams, but uh, the perspective of, of a team. So here's Nearpod. And if you log into Nearpod right now, I have a sample test that we've set up and we actually used yesterday for one of the area youth rallies or Pathfinder rallies. Um, I think what we would probably be able to do is we create this test one time uh, for each level, and then it can actually be shared uh, to different groups. Um, in any case, it's in here. And then what, what you would do is you start the testing. When you start the testing, at that time is when a new unique code for that session will be generated. This is the code that you would have to give to each team. And as Marilyn described earlier, each team of six will log into Nearpod with only one computer. And that computer is gonna be the computer that the scribe of that team is going to use. So for example, this is team one. There, this is the screen of team one's scribe. I'm gonna log in here. And what you will be able to see is the first screen that comes up is enter your team name. So I'll put team one, join the lesson. And then immediately you'll see the exact same screen that the test um, person that's giving the test will also see. And they will also see team one here. And I see somebody else has logged in, that's fine. I'm gonna put in another team here. Same code, you log in with that code. And then, and you guys are welcome to join if you want to as well, uh, but team two, all right? So you'll see here that they see the exact same screen that you see here. I'm gonna close this window for right now. All right, so um, the way that the slides are set up is uh, just like PowerPoint, you can press left and right to advance or go back on, this, on the slide. Um, the first screen that you'll see usually is the instructions. So we'll go through the instructions here and keep moving forward. And then the first slide um, that the kids will be interested in is the, less, the testing begin slide. Once that happens, the first question show, shows up. Again, this is, the, this is when the uh, person that's reading the question will read the question in English and Spanish. And then as soon as they finish reading the question, uh, they can advance the slide. And the next slide that comes up is um, the slide that allows the student or the team to enter in their answer. What you'll be able to do is click, as soon as you click on start activity, a timer starts, a countdown timer for three, two, one, and then let's go. The, you'll see there's a timer here that goes down. And this is what um, Jean and uh, Marilyn one is, what were describing. Um, basically, even though this timer is a certain time, this may be off by a second or two sometimes. However, every team will get the exact same amount of time, whether it's 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or, or however long the time is given. Uh, another part of it that you'll see is the question here. Uh, I'm gonna go back and you see it that said time's up. So I didn't write an answer. I'll go to the next one and then describe that. What you'll see is in real time, if anybody answered the question as they write their answer and submit their answer, the person that's administering the test will be able to see the answers as they are submitted by each team. So one thing that will be that we use is we just made sure that all the team's um, answers were logged in before we moved on to the next slide. And then like normal, we go to the next slide and the next slide would be the answer of question number one. And go to number two. All right, read the question, go to the next slide, start activity. Everybody gets three seconds to count down. And then let me show you something here. So <clears throat> you see the question written again here. You see the timer here. 
And then if, if the team wants, they can click on this little icon and it'll show the slide again. Just sometimes they like to see this visually, uh, but you can close that. This is where you can type in an answer. My answer, uh, answer to question number two is, and then you, you, you can click on submit, but even if you don't, it's okay because what will happen is that answer will be logged into, um, will be logged in. So if you are able to successfully click on submit, great, that's fine. If you don't, whatever they typed in to this field, um, when, as soon as the time ended, that is the answer that will be logged in to Nearpod. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna keep moving forward. All right, one other situation that I can think of is this. Again, you go here, you type an answer and you say, okay, so as Marilyn described, if let's say we're a team here, then the team can communicate with each other verbally or through their individual Zoom chat. Each team is gonna be in their own Zoom chat so they can verbally communicate with each other or chat with each other through the Zoom chatting window. And let's say I type in an answer, answer, submit. And they go, oh no, I, it needs to be something else. They can edit the answer and then put something else in there. Does that make sense? So it's pretty um, foolproof in terms of making sure that the last answer that the team submitted is captured, okay? And then let me keep going. And the answer is the angels. And I saw a lot of angels over there, so that's good. Um, I think that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions at this point. So, uh, Wait, let, hey, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I think everybody, you know, they're, they're looking at it and you're, you're showing it very easily. I know that okay. a lot of people, a lot of <laughs> us that are seeing this for the first time may be right. a little overwhelmed with the, the whole thing. Let me just let everybody know yes. that more than likely we will do a mock run in right. uh, January so right. that you can kind of see how it works. And, 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 if, and more than likely we will need to have a training for the uh, technical side of things yes. on another session so that the people that are going to lead this with you, especially the leaders, the, the, the Pathfinder leaders at every conference, mm -hmm. uh, so that they can get to know it and share with, with their parents, we're going to have to have a training with them too. Because right. this, this seems very easy from our side, yeah. but we will make <laughs> sure that you, uh, are, you know, that you are okay. So be thinking about the people that will lead it with you in right. your conference that are going to handle the technical side of it so that right. you can kind of get them enrolled and, and kind of going with this. Just a, just an FYI for everybody. And right. I want to make another comment to that. Nearpod is free. If you have mm -hmm. less than 40 teams, every club director can go in, set up a Nearpod session, set up practice questions with their teams. So they can practice as much as they want. They can do it every week. They can do it mm -hmm. however they want. As long as they have less than 40 teams, you can have sessions right. to practice. Um, so the kids are comfortable with the process. We're gonna be doing as much training as we can, but I do recommend that they go in, set up a practice session, mess around with it, understand it. The next person up is gonna be Sherilyn. She's gonna explain how you get questions into Nearpod, because he already showed you something already set up mm. <laughs> and we can set up some questions for you but you may want to set up your own questions your own right. process your own testing so it's fairly intuitive from my experience you just have to get in there and, and dink around with it right and like i said um we, if you're if you guys want we can share this sample test with you as well or you can create your own but this should be pretty easy to share. Okay. Um, so Sherilyn, you want to explain how you get questions in? Sure thing. Um, yeah, Sherilyn, before you get in there, I want to make it clear that the answer to James 514 was to call the elders. Call the elders. I, I just uh, wanted you to know that. 
<laughs> Jean knows that answer. <laughs> That's cool. Um, let's see here. Key, uh, maybe I should go ahead and share my screen. Sure, um, go ahead. I will tell you all that the process of getting um, things that you have created in PowerPoint into Nearpod is not completely easy. Uh, it's doable and it's gotten easier over the last year. Um, it, if you are overwhelmed and feel like, oh my goodness, there's no way I can do this. Um, give somebody on our tech team a, a shout out of some kind and we would be happy to walk you through this process one-on-one -on -one because it might be easier. But I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and show you the process. Um, and, um, and then we can, we can figure out, uh, you can figure out from there how many questions you have. Now, this is in my Nearpod library. This is where I have all of my tests and that kind of thing. So if I'm wanting to create something new, I go up to where it says create and I go down to lessons and it'll open up a little window for me here. Um, I have created some things over in PowerPoint and I don't want to have to recreate all of those slides. So I'm going to go to upload files and I'm going to just pull in my orientation um, that I created um, just simply because it is something that hasn't gone into Nearpod yet. So uh, you'll notice that it says file processing down on the bottom right. And depending on the size of your file, it could take a while for it to pop in. Um, once it pops in, all of your slides will have become images, which means that they are not editable once they're in here. These are now pictures in here. Um, if I am wanting to put a, an, uh, one of our interactive kind of things, uh, I'm gonna go right after this in-person picture here. I'm going to go to an activity and the format we've used is the open-ended question. You'll notice that on the, the slides that Key had, he had entered the question um, information here. Um, so, um, so this is where the question goes. You can change the size of the fonts and the all of that in there. Um, over here on the right hand side, you'll see the add timer. And you will notice that on seconds, you are limited to selecting it in groupings of 15 seconds at a time. So we cannot use the five 10, 15, 20, 25, you know, the five minute, the five second increments like we've done in the past. So your shortest one is 15 seconds. Um, if, um, if it's longer, you go 30, 45, and then you can add minutes to it as well. So that's where you set the timer. So my timer is set. You'll see over here, now I have a blue 15 seconds. Down below that is where you put an image um, if you create images of your slides, you can add those in here so that there's a visual of each of the slides on within the Nearpod process. Um, down below that, it enables, um, if you have it turned off, that's the default. Um, if you turn that on, the students can make recordings of the lesson or the practice test that you're putting together. So. Um, that's the process. Then you go down to, okay. Where is my button? Stuff's in my way. Um, once you have that created, oh, there we go. 
Okay, down here on the bottom, um, it tells us that we want to save it um, or cancel. So you save it and it'll automatically put that into your presentation. Now you'll notice that we've got a white box here. That's the activity box and it will pop up that timer, the countdown thing as you go through it. Um, and uh, once you're done putting in all of your open end activities, you do save and exit. Oh, they want me to give it a name. So I'm gonna give it a practice. Practice test. Um, this um, Nearpod is created for school systems. So it asks for grades and subjects and that kind of thing. I typically leave those blank, save and exit. And you're good to go to run this practice test um, as Key showed you. So that's basically how creating something in Nearpod works. Just so you don't panic, because I could just hear all the wheels running. Oh no, there's 90 questions. I'm gonna have to do all 90 questions. No, we will do the test for you, the real test. We will do that for you and we will share it with you. This, we wanted to show you this because you're gonna to wanna to create some practice things. You wanna, some directors may wanna mess around. So we wanted to show you what was possible, but we'll provide the ones with the real questions for the real testing. So you don't panic. Right, yeah. And and those are those are larger and um, they will be a, a bit more in depth to, to get them prepped and ready to go. So um, I would tell you if you're, if you're talking to club leaders, uh, coaches, directors, um, suggest to them that they um, try to do tests of 10 to 15 questions uh, just because it makes it easy uh, to get it done and use it rather than spending all of their time trying to do creation on on Nearpod. That's all I've got, Marilyn, unless people have questions that I need to go back to. All right, so next up we have Miguel. Miguel's gonna show you how we will be doing the judge uh, distribution of questions, collecting them and sc our score sheets. This is just informational. You're conference union area can do it however works best for them uh if you would like sh this information shared for you to use it miguel's happy to do that so i give the floor to miguel i just spoke with miguel um if it's okay i'm gonna show you guys how to export the answers that each team submitted from nearpod first and then from that point miguel will take over and and show us how to um, do the actual scoring. So let's say we just finished our testing. Okay, click on okay. <clears throat> from here, you can go click on these three little dots. And then from here, you go to the reports section. And then it will, if you've run this test multiple times, like I've done here, you'll see multiple um, sessions. Uh, so let's say I'm going to, I want to export this one. So they, Nearpod has actually four different ways that you can export the testing data. Uh, two of, two of them. So there's a session view. So the way that I think about it is all each question is grouped together by all the students. So question number one, it has in that section, the answers from all you know, X number of students. And that goes to section, uh, question number two, and that has all the answers from all the students or the teams, and then so on. Um, or the student view where it groups it in by student. So it says student, or team one answers to questions one through 90. Team two answers from questions from one to 90, and so on. I think th the way that we've done it in the past is uh, the PDF view of the session. And I've exported one from before here. So this will kind of give you an example. So it ex exports it into a nice little PDF file. What we've done in the past is, um, so it's, it's critical that each team put in their team name accurately. Um, and then we 
I think what we did last year was we printed these out, okay? And this will be question number one. And you'll know it by, it should say question one, the, the actual question that was um, asked here. And then it'll group all the, all the teams, in, um, how they answered in this section right here. Um, I don't know the best way to do it other than printing it out and then marking on this piece of paper the the score that each team got maybe that's up to each each area each um, conference but this is the way one of the ways that you can export the data is a pdf the other way it's similar but it's in excel form so similar thing here where it's here's here are all the teams and then these are the answers to each question so this will be the answer to question one for team one and so on. Okay. So then this is how you would, um, you can either export it as a CSV or Excel file, or the other one that you can export is a, as a PDF. And then I'll hand it over to uh, Miguel here, um, to, um, sh so he can show you the, the Google sheet that he created, uh, that will help you tabulate that data, um, uh, more efficiently. Go ahead, Miguel. Yeah, I, I need the uh, screen sharing permission. Uh, uh, if Miguel Torres, if he can have the co-host. Okay, there you go. You should have permissions now. Okay. All right, so this is the, the Google Chip form uh, he and I created. And we've been using this form in the conference level for the last years. And here, once you download the, that PDF, you can manually enter the, the points here and have more information and be able to rank the, the teams. This is already populated, but uh, it should look like this, just like a blank area. And you should be able to just enter uh, the points manually. Let me go back. Uh, to show it again uh, with the points uh, in. And let me explain uh, on the left side, here we have the club name on this area. And we have the uh, team numbers. Uh, we have 18, 18 teams right now. This is just a sample. And uh, this can be edited. You can add staff, delete staff. You can modify it uh, to your needs. Uh, here we we used to have the 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 area, the union column, uh, and to the right, on top we have uh, we, this is divided in four quarters. This is the first quarter, and we have uh, twenty three questions. Below that is the uh, score for the first question. That means uh, that if we get 100%, that means that everybody got that uh, question number one correct. And this can give you some information like the, the question number two, if you see 14%, that gives you uh, some information that the, about this question. So you, you can see that maybe this was a not a good question or uh, it was a difficult question. Um, and you can keep checking, I mean, all these uh, by color. Uh, the blue colors are high scores. Green is uh, uh, still good, but a little lower. And the red, it gives you uh, the lower percentages. Here on this line, we can see the, the, the book and the verse of that question. And here on the next line, you can see the, the points, the number of points. So this, this question was worth one point, this is worth two points, and so on. So this is the first quarter. And then uh, after the first quarter, you have this this information that gives you the um, percentage 
related to that first quarter. Uh, the maximum points uh, for the first quarter was 34. I mean, the possible points was 30, 36, but the, the one team got 34 points. And we can see it right here. This, this was the, the, the team that got the highest score, which is 94.44. And, and we can uh, see the rest of the score for the first quarter. And then uh, we move to the second, second quarter and, and check all the, the points. We keep going. We move to the third quarter. This is the fourth quarter. And then at the end, we got the, the final scores. Um, and we can see here that uh, the, the whole test was worth 156 points. And the team with the most points got 149. And we can see that team here that they, they just got seven uh, questions wrong. And sometimes if we, um, we uh, curve the points, they got 95, but you can curve the points to, to 100. And based on that, uh, you can uh, adjust all the, the team. And on the right, they're ranked by by place. These are the first place teams, the second place, third place, and sometimes we have a participation of place. So this is a, a tool that you can use if you if you want. Uh, it gives me it gives you some valuable information. Uh, and as I said. Uh, is it usually blank? All you have to do is just populate uh, the, the scores right here manually. And then it starts populating uh, and, and getting the, the percentages. Uh, we also have uh, at the bottom, we have another uh, page or tab where um, we, we have this, uh, to be print out, uh, so you can print it and, and uh, use it when um, you're about to give certificates or or easy view uh, on paper. But this is uh, basically it. I mean, uh, unless you have anything else to say, Ki, am I forgetting anything? No, I think you covered it all. So basically with this sheet, I think what we can commit to as a team is giving you this sheet, um, you, what you would be responsible for as leaders is entering the team names um, in the right order and then entering in each team's score. But everything else should be populated automatically. That's, that's the, the advantage of using this sheet is you just put in the team names and each team score, and we will it will calculate the scores accordingly. Yeah. Yep. And as I enter numbers, you can see that the score changes. And if this is yeah. worth two points, turn green when they got all the points, yellow when they miss some of the points, and red when they get zero, mm -hmm. zero so points. There's a question on here. So will the scores be imported from Nearpod CSV automatically? No, because Nearpod doesn't keep, you cannot enter the scores into Nearpod. Nearpod just captures the actual answer that you type, the team typed in. It doesn't have that concept of, you know, keeping scores. So you will have to <clears throat> um, type in the answers, the, the scores that each team received into this spreadsheet, if you got, if you choose to use the spreadsheet. And the judges will score each question and mm -hmm. those have to go somewhere. Your right. conference union area will decide how you want to do it. This is just a tool to help you do that. Right. Um, you, however you've done it in the past will work. 
there's no reason that you have to use this sheet. Yep. Um, this was just something that we're using and we're making available if you'd like uh, to use it. Um, one of the questions on the challenges, I don't want to answer the questions on how things are going to be challenged until we've had a discussion with uh, Armando and Jean and how they want to handle challenges and then we'll devise a method to do that. So right now a lot of questions have come by about challenges. I don't have an answer yet. That is more or less our presentation. So the next step is for those who want to go to a breakout room, um, each of us on the team will go be hosting a breakout room so you can ask us questions um, and we can get a feel for if we get a lot of the same questions or a lot of confusion, our next training can cover that information. I'll read the chat myself later. I'm going to record off the chat as a file for myself to read to see if I have uh, any questions that I think we need to address in our I, next training. I, I want to make sure that everybody understands that all the documents will be available. Um, you know, even the spreadsheet, the recording, um, anything that, that we need, um, we will put, we'll, uh, we will host it, we'll post it on the PBE site. Is that, I mean, is that correct? Um, or the thing okay. is that PBE site isn't quite ready yet. It won't be ready for a few more weeks. So we're going to make it available to you in a different I'm about, way. I'm talking about the, the website, Club Ministry site. We will have the PBE section in there. Um, this will be uh, for sure there. At the same time, we will send this to every single youth director and Pathfinder director of every conference uh, so that we can have that and that option. So we will have that uh, as soon as possible. So don't fret. I know this is a lot of stuff coming your way. Some of you have mentioned on the in the chat that this is that you need all the help, and we understand. So that's the reason we're we're kind of giving you a heads up. This is the first of at least four trainings, and there will be the recordings available that you can go over with your team. So just letting everybody know. All right, I am setting up the rooms. So uh, we have. Breakout room uh, one, two, three, four, five. We have five breakout rooms. Uh, Marilyn, is that correct? Correct. Uh, Sherilyn, myself, Key, uh, Miguel, and Chris. Okay. And I put Jean over here too. Jean doesn't want to do a breakout? <laughs> I'm, as far as technology, no. Uh, <laughs> as far as general, general questions, I'm happy to help. But uh, Technology is, uh, I write questions. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, so hold on. Let me just put the last one. Uh, Miguel, I'm gonna put you there. All right, breakout room six. Okay, so I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna open all rooms. And uh, you know, after this, just kind of let you know, if you need to go, you go. Uh, we're not gonna come back um, we're going to close the session uh, here, but if you need to go to one of the rooms, I'm going to open all the rooms and you'll be assigned and, 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 and you go and you're going to meet the people who just had this. So uh, let's, let's have a word of prayer before we go, just in case everybody's leaving. And I pray that, you know, you're not, you're not uh, scared about this. Um, God will have a way for you <laughs> and we have a great team that can support you. So we're trying to, do our best. So let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much. Um, Lord, it may seem overwhelming, but Lord, um, we will find a way in you. Uh, we want to make this available to our conferences, our churches, because our, our, our pathfinders are learning about the Bible and scripture. We want to make it fun. We want to make it available to them. Help us to understand, to gather the team that will help us as we move forth and we ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen.